Welcome back to the Gospel of Luke. Yesterday they asked this question about the woman who had seven husbands and there were never offspring and they think they've got Jesus over the barrel. Let's jump straight in. Jesus answered and said to them, The sons of this age marry and are given in marriage, but those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Nor can they die any more, for they are equal to the angels and are sons of God, being sons of the resurrection. But even Moses showed in the burning bush passage that the dead are raised when he called the Lord the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. For he is not the God of the dead, but of the living, for all live to him. Then some of the scribes answered and said, Teacher, you have spoken well. But after that, they dared not question him anymore. And I love that last line. Uh, this was the end. The, the, each group had kind of had its chance. They gave Jesus their, their hardest question. And after this, it's like, you know, we're not even, we're not even going to ask him questions anymore. It's just, it, we always come out behind. We always lose ground when we ask Jesus. When we challenge him and ask him a question, he defeats us. So they won't ask him any more questions after this. But anyway, let's look at this. Jesus tells us a lot of things about what it's going to be in the new world. And a lot of people have been concerned, you know, when we're when I'm in my glorified body, when we're in, in heaven, what's it going to be like, you know, will we, will we be married? Will we do this? Will we do that? And there's a lot of things we don't know, but there's a few pieces here that Jesus gives us. Okay, we won't be marrying there. Okay, just plan on that. We won't be marrying there. We won't be able to die anymore. We'll be immortal. We will be sons of the resurrection. I think the most important piece here is that God is not the God of the dead. God is the God of the living. We think that some things are just too much for him. We think that he doesn't understand us. We think that he is somehow behind the times. But he's the God of the living, which means God is always up to date. Christianity is always up to date. When you live your life today, you and you go by God's word and you spend maybe some devotion, not maybe, spend devotional time with him in the morning praying to him, listening, reading his word, seeing what senses he gives you back. You will be up to date because he's the God of the living. Are you the dead or the living? Well, if you've received Jesus, you are certainly among the living. All right? You, by free choice, you choose him day by day. You become converted brand new in the new day. And so he is the God of the living. So he's the God who's for you, who's with you, who's not silent. He is the God who's with you today. So he will give you what you need today. So special, our beautiful Jesus. So special. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for being the God of the living. No, we don't. You haven't given us every detail about life after the resurrection, life after the return of Jesus, but we are certainly given enough. Thank you that we know we can trust you and that today when we wake up, the next, tomorrow morning when we wake up, the first thing in our mind can be, Hey, I am a servant of the king. I am a servant of the God, not of the dead, not of the sleeping. I'm a servant of the God of the living. Thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen. So Jesus defeats them all. He's, there's no more questions they can throw at him. They are not going to risk it ever again. They're done. They are done. Now it's purely going to be a uh, plan to murder Jesus. We've got to get rid of this guy. May you be blessed today serving he who is risen from the dead.